Hello, hello, welcome. Thank you all for coming today uh, to be um, educated and empowered uh, with the SIU Bra Day, uh, which also stands for Breast Reconstruction Day. And a huge, huge thank you to Maria Ansley for really, really, truly being the rock star at SIU that continues to put together such amazing programming to inform and educate not just your patients here locally in Illinois, but for all of those tuning in online and here visiting uh, today at the Vineyard. So thank you so, so much. Uh, my name is Dana Donifrey. I'm a founder and CEO of Ana Ono. And two years ago, uh, we had an incredible runway show for Bra Day here at the Vineyard uh, with, I believe, 12 or 13 patients from SIU. And it was such an honor to be here to celebrate that with you guys. And although this event is a little bit different, it's just so impactful and empowering for those that can tune in, learn more about their health and their wellness, and especially their breast reconstruction options. So as we all know, breast cancer affects so many of us here. One in eight women are diagnosed. There's a lot of decisions that have to be made after getting a cancer diagnosis. I myself faced very difficult decisions at the age of 27, now 11 years ago. So I'm very honored to get to stand here and share my story and support this awesome cause and see these beautiful patients uh, share with you their lived experience as well as they go through all of this. So we're thrilled to be here. Thank you to Susan and the Dannenberg family for hosting again at your beautiful, beautiful vineyard. We couldn't ask for a beautiful or more um, just stunning place to do this hot and 95 degree weather underneath these lights. <laughs> so there is napkins. I will, I will be your napkin girl today. But um, I hope you guys all walk away with a little bit of information um, after you listen to these amazing stories. And please just know if anybody in your life is diagnosed with breast cancer, to get them connected to a community and uh, get the support that they need so they can travel along this crazy path and uh, be able to get the help and care that is required. So it's with my honor that I will introduce to you my dear, dear friend, Melissa of Cancer Fashionista, who I've known now for um, a handful of years. She's a triple negative breast cancer thriver and survivor, and she's been doing incredible work bridging the gap between the doctor's office and the patient's lifestyle. So with that, I'm going to pass the mic for this incredible moderation, and I'll see you guys soon. Thank you. Thank you, Dana, for the wonderful, warm introduction. And um, first of all, I want to thank Susan Dannenberger for inviting us to come to this beautiful home of hers. Uh, I flew in from New Jersey. Dana flew in from Pennsylvania. And uh, I couldn't be more proud to be here with my dear friend and the other incredible panelists. And the other thing I want to mention is how awesome is it that we are here and it's not October. Can I have a round of applause? <laughs> Um, not to minimize the awareness that we get around breast cancer in October, but uh, women are diagnosed every single day. One out of, out of every eight women are diagnosed with breast cancer each year. So uh, we're here today to uh, talk about breast reconstruction, which is obviously a big part of uh, breast cancer and uh, helping all of us uh, live the best life. So with that being said, I'm gonna introduce each panelist. We're gonna have a round table discussion and then we'll answer some questions at the end. But thank you again, everyone, for being here. And to all of our friends out on Facebook. <laughs> so Susan, my beautiful friend, you're a winemaker, you're a stage four metastatic breast cancer survivor, and you modeled in the Anna Ono New York Fashion Week show in 2019. She's hot stuff. <laughs> um, what we would like to know is, tell us your breast cancer story, but also share with us what led you to Dr. Summer. So um, I started with a small pea-sized lump in 2014, and the doctors recommended a lumpectomy I had just opened the winery, so I was like, okay. And then afterwards, we found out we didn't get it. He didn't get it all, so we had six weeks of radiation. Um, I wish I could go back and change that, but that kind of led me on this bad path. I feel like for reconstruction later. So when it came back in 2016, mastectomy time, but it was really difficult with the radiated skin. So the plastic surgeon I had at Siteman, he was kind of just like pop something in there, 
you know, we can't worry about it. And I had some troubles healing and he didn't want to touch it anymore. But it was a it was a horrible, horrible look. It was really high on one side and really low on the other. Uh, one size was bigger than the other. There was lots of gouges and big, huge dents. And I lived with that for a year, but I was so self-conscious. And I know most of you guys know I dress like with lots of cleavage and you know, <laughs> so I couldn't wear my usual stuff. I couldn't be me. And so um, a couple of customers had talked about Dr. Summer and I was like, all right, a year later, I come to her and I'm like, oh my gosh, I hope you can fix this. And she said, I can, but it's gonna take a little bit of time. And I'm like, okay, I'm willing to do that. Sign me up. Right. So she did. She did. She fixed it. I mean, they look fantastic, and I'm really happy. And I get compliments. Don't they? All the time. <laughs> I do. I get compliments all the time. Incredible. Like, I can't believe you have breast cancer, boo. Incredible. I'm sorry that you had to go through that. And, you know, that's one of the reasons we're here today um, is to raise that. Uh, question of, you know, what happens if I'm not happy with the results and to be able to have that open line of communication with your surgeon. And um, I really am so happy to have led this conversation with your story because Dr. Summer, who's sitting next to you, has actually had an incredible impact on every woman sitting here. Um, yeah. So... You know, we're going to definitely come, in, come back to you, Susan, but I think this is a great opportunity to formally introduce you to Dr. Summer. Those of you that don't already know her, she is the director of the SIU Cosmetic Clinic and plastic surgeon who specializes in breast and cosmetic care. Um, and like I mentioned, she really has made quite an incredible impact on every woman sitting here. Um, what would you say, Dr. Summer, and thank you so much for joining us today, when you know, someone is diagnosed with breast cancer and then they are ready to begin their breast reconstruction process. What should they do before they even see a surgeon like you? Well, obviously their first step is to talk with their oncologist, the oncologic surgeon is gonna be taking care of their cancer. Um, but our hope as plastic surgeons is that every oncologic surgeon tells the woman that they're taking care of, that there is this option for breast reconstruction. For uh, you know, years, women weren't even being told about breast reconstruction, so they would go through breast cancer surgery and not even know that that was an option. So we've mostly gotten over that hurdle, although there are still small towns around the country that that still is a concern. So that's a lot of what breast reconstruction awareness is all about, is just that women having that knowledge that they should ask to be able to talk to someone about breast reconstruction before they start that journey so they can make an informed decision. Absolutely, and I think, you know, one thing for all of us to remember is that doctors are people, and uh, they care about you, and they want you to do well, and they want to do a good job, and, you know, we as patients, you probably should agree, shouldn't be afraid to ask any questions. No, absolutely, I mean, I want people to come and be as, you know, ask me as many questions as they can, and so I can hopefully make it as understandable as possible. I and mean, it's when you've been just told you have breast cancer, it's gonna be very hard to hear everything that that surgeon is telling you, and maybe your oncologist is telling you, and then to have a third doctor trying to explain what your options are. It's a lot of information. And so it's I've scary. Been, it's, yeah. I mean, and I hate to use this word, but I remember speaking to my doctor and they were like, this is an amputation. You know, it's serious, it's invasive, and it's not something to be taken lightly. And if, especially if you're not comfortable with your surgeon, you wanna maybe get a second opinion, wouldn't you agree as Oh, well? absolutely. I mean, I think it's definitely wise to be, com you want to be comfortable with the person who's gonna be taking care of you, both on the cancer side and the reconstructive side. So I think that, hopefully women are empowered to seek someone that they're comfortable with. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, well, thank you so much for sharing your insight there. Um, I have so many beautiful women here. I wanna make sure we have time to talk to everybody and share their story. Um, Tammy, uh, you're amazing. Um, <laughs> she is just a, an incredible, uh, woman and who I had the pleasure of meeting also through the Anna Ono fashion show circuit. Uh, Tammy is a police officer. You had bilateral breast reconstruction with implants and you modeled in the 2020 New York fashion show. So you can get your autograph after, the, after this. <laughs> I'm her agent. <laughs> um, Tammy, if you can share your story with us and you know what's really interesting about your story and all of you will learn, you based part of your breast reconstruction decision on your career path. So maybe tell us a little bit about that, please. So we're not the 
questions and we'll talk in the back of summer. <laughs> so, uh, when I sat down and talked to a Dr. Summer, obviously, I put a lot in her hands because I really didn't know what to expect. I was just doing what the doctor said. Um, but one thing I did want to do was at work, I wanted to make sure that I was still strong enough to fight and not lose a fight because of my muscles maybe reacting to my implants. Sorry. No, no I love you. I just want to hold you, make sure you're okay. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm good. So a lot of it was I didn't want uh, anything to happen on the street when I was working. So I was worried about the guys I work with, the gals I work with, and myself. And so there was a lot of thought of going over the muscle um, instead of under the muscle. So that, with that, I, I made the decision to go over the muscle. Um, I didn't know what all that would entail. Um, I was informed that there would be some fat grafting. I think I might have needed to add some more questions because I didn't like it. <laughs> okay, yeah, no, this, to, is, this, is, this to, is all real. This is yeah. what you went through. Yeah, so once the, uh, to me, that was the most painful part was the fat grafting. <laughs> so right. I, I can't see myself doing it anytime soon again. <laughs> right. <laughs> so Dr. Summer, how did you uh, decide to uh, make this decision with Tammy? What did you base your final uh, procedure upon? Well, I mean, whenever we talk with the patient about breast reconstruction, we talk about using an implant or we talk about using their own tissue. Those are two big options. And then once Tammy had decided she really wanted to go with the implant, uh, it, the decision was, do we want to do it a more traditional route, which is going under the muscle, or do we want to go a route that's more, um, that's something we're doing more recently where we're staying above the muscle? And there are pros and cons to each. She chose the second of those because she wanted to save as much muscle function as she could because of her job. Um, but just explaining all the pros and cons of all the different options so that they can make an informed decision that's best for them. Absolutely. And obviously, are you happy with your decision? Yay! 100%. <laughs> thank you so much, Tammy. And thank you, Dr. Summer. Um, so I would love to uh, go over to our beautiful Janelle. Uh, Janelle was first diagnosed with breast cancer at age of 22, and she had a recurrence at age 27. And today we are so happy to say that she is pregnant with a baby boy. Yeah. Round of applause. <laughs> um, Janelle, first of all, congratulations. We're so excited for you that you're going to have a beautiful new baby soon. Uh, tell us about your breast reconstruction experience and why you think it's important to be your own advocate. Um, I definitely think it's important to advocate for yourself. Oh, it's awkward. Um, just because of the simple fact that you do have options. Here, I'll give you mine. I'll give you mine for a moment. There you go. Sorry. Hopefully this is better. Okay, a little bit. Um, I just definitely think it's important to advocate for yourself. Um, definitely ask questions. You do have options, which I didn't think that you did initially. Um, you know, you hear one thing, you read so much online, and you can, you know, you can get answers, but to see what's best for you is just finding someone that, you know, you feel comfortable with. You don't have to go to the first person that suggested to you and just ask questions. And I think you'll, you know, I mean, obviously I'm happy with where I am right now. Or this for a moment. Uh, thank you. We're going to share microphones, Dr. Summer. I'm going to get a little cozy over here. Thank you so much. These are, uh, we were told they are concert mics and we need to speak very closely. So I feel like a rock star. We're all rock stars tonight. Um, so Janelle, thank you for sharing your story. Did you, um, did you have a second opinion? Did you see any other doctors or before you saw Dr. Summer? Yeah, I definitely reached out to several different. She needs some. I reached out to several different people. That, um, I did have initially surgeries with another doctor who was great, um, did amazing work with my sister, and uh, you know, unfortunately, the, the same doctor may not work for you. Um, but I did reach out to other people, and I just felt comfortable with Dr. Summer, which is why I chose to go to her, just giving those options, which I didn't have initially. Um, so that's why I said advocate for yourself. You don't have to feel like you're stuck. Um, 
going to whomever you first see. Um, you definitely do have a choice, even if you don't have a choice with having the cancer itself. Absolutely. Thank you, Janelle. And that is really the theme of tonight. I mean, there's so many topics with, within the breast reconstruction realm, but we, what we really want to underscore tonight is the importance of being your own advocate and asking the questions and getting the second opinions. Mm, Google a little bit, but not too much, right, Dr. <laughs> <laughs> and um, something also really special about Janelle is that she has a twin sister. Um, can you tell us a little bit about how your breast cancer uh, journey has impacted your sister's life and your family's life? Um, so um, me and my sister are adopted, so we don't know much of our family history. Well, don't know much, we don't know anything at all. Um, so when I was diagnosed, um, it was like a blessing and a curse because I was able to then, you know, get tested genetically for different diseases or, you know, genetic issues. Um, and we do have the BRCA1 gene, um, which my sister was thankfully able to get tested for that as well. Um, and she does have it, but thankfully she was able to get preventative surgeries um, which, you know, potentially is helping save her life, which I'm very grateful for every day. Amazing. Um, what an incredible family story. And thank you, you know, to both of you for being so brave. And, you know, unfortunately, you know, breast cancer is certainly not something that we choose. But in, in, in having that happen to you, it, you really saved your sister from so much. So, so congratulations. It's a beautiful story. Um, I would love to introduce our next panelist, Autumn. Autumn, you have an incredible story and you were diagnosed at a very young age. Please share your experience with us and why you think it's important to know what your options are. I was diagnosed, I was 25. Um, I found my lump when I was in Afghanistan. I was put off, you're too young, you're too young, it's fibrous tissue. Um, it took it spreading to my lymph nodes to have Navy Medical take it seriously. Wow. I was stationed in North Carolina, and my case manager told me to go home. She said, you're on, you're on leave. You know, you're getting ready to go to Sears school in two weeks. Go home, find a doctor there. And I'm glad I did because my family's here. Everybody I know is here. Of course. Um, I was lucky enough to get an appointment at SIU. Um, so I knew pretty much from the get-go that someone at SIU was going to rebuild my boobs. Um, I was lucky enough to get Dr. Summer and she worked with me. I mean, I had, had several surgeries after the initial mastectomy. I had to have an implant replaced, several fat graftings, and I still wasn't happy. I, was, I didn't feel like me. Take your time. And I finally uh, got the courage to say, hey, Dr. Summer, I'm not, I'm not happy. No, I, I, I'm in pain. When I move my arm, my implants ripple. You can see the ripple through my shirts. I don't want this anymore. And so thankful for her for taking them out because... I feel like I turned back into pre-breast cancer me. <laughs> That's an incredible, you're so brave on so many levels. And I know this is so hard. You know, we all um, are so proud of our stories and we've all come such a long way, but it's really hard, you guys, to come up here and, and talk to all of you. But I, can, I know I could speak for Autumn that she's doing this because she knows even if it helps one person feel better about what they're about to step into, um, you're so brave. 
I, I can't thank you enough. You're incredible. And, um, you know, for finding Dr. Summer and, you know, for being brave enough to know that this decision to not reconstruct was right for you. Are you happy now that you, are you do you feel, I, you know, we actually had a little powwow last night. I'll give you the secret scoop so that we can get to know each other a little bit before this. Um, but I remember you said your whole f disposition changed when you said, I felt a weight, I skipped the goosebumps. I, get, I felt a weight lifted knowing that they, I was not gonna have implants anymore. Can you t are you okay to tell us a little bit about that feeling? Yeah. Um, Thank you. I didn't want to look in a mirror, you know? I, I, I hated even late putting makeup on in the morning because I felt like I was an imposter, you know? I chose to do implants initially because I felt like it was the last thing that was gonna make me a woman. Yeah, I had a hysterectomy in 2016, so the implants were literally the last thing. Like, I don't have hair, my eyebrows are tattooed on, I finally have eyelashes, and I felt like it was that last little bit of femininity. But being a woman isn't tied to your chest. It's not tied to the way that you look. It's tied to the way that you feel. And it was so liberating to wake up after having my implants removed and looking down and being like, yep, this is me. Oh my God, you're incredible. And how gorgeous is she? <laughs> you're so beautiful inside and out. And I'm so honored that I had the opportunity to actually get to know you a little bit before we sat down here because um, I just feel like you're a beacon of light for so many women. And Dr. Summer, you're so humble, but you're pretty incredible because um, this was not easy for you because as a plastic surgeon, you're really trained to rebuild us. And to your point, like I always say, when you lose your hair and you lose your breasts, it's so defeminizing. You know, that's what makes us feel sexy and beautiful and all those things that were taught, you know, playing with Barbies and all that stuff. So tell me from your perspective how you felt and how you navigated Autumn through this decision because I know this was not easy for you either. I mean, I think that uh, Autumn was one of my first patients that I performed a reversal of reconstruction on. Um, so it was new for me to, to be kind of going through that experience. But um, we, you know, we just had a discussion about it and talked about the risks and the, you know, the pros and the cons of making that decision. And I think for me, it's been very informative because, you know, with breast reconstruction awareness, which we've now been, you know, putting on these events and talking about it now for, well, um, nine years, eight years, something like that. Um, you know, at first it was all about breast reconstruction. Use your, t use your own tissue or use implants. We didn't really talk about the other option. And so Autumn sort of brought that to light, that there, the other option is actually no reconstruction. And I have always talked to my patients about it when they come in uh, for a consult. I say, you know, the options are you don't have to do reconstruction at all. If you want, you can always wear a prosthesis and a bra. That's an option. Or you can do reconstruction where we do something more permanent. But um, I think it's not something we really talked about in this arena and until autumn, until I had that experience with a patient who was truly happier without it. Um, it just brought to light that that's why patients need to know everything, all their options, so that, because this is a, a valid option for other pe for people. I mean, for other women, it might be a, a more valid option for them than to go through all the surgeries. Thank you so much. And to your point, you know, for many women, and you know, the, having the implants and then removing them can be a, a huge relief for a number of reasons. And there could be several different reasons that they decide to go, the, like you said, the reverse reconstruction. So, Autumn, thank you for sharing your story. Like I said, you really are such a beautiful example. And I hope that there's someone out there that's, you know, thinking about going this route and that's afraid that she may not feel sexy and beautiful. Well, take a look at Autumn. <laughs> thank you so much. Um, so now I just kind of, you know, want to go around and, uh, you know, talk about uh, some other different topics. Um, and any of you that would like to volunteer, please feel free. Um, if you could do your reconstruction surgery all over again, what would you have done differently? 
who would like to take that question. Susan, would you like to take that? Thank you. Well, obviously I would have picked a different plastic surgeon from the very beginning because he didn't, he didn't care, and Dr. Summer does. Um, you know, there's been so many things that I've learned in the past four years, and same with Tammy. I, I do a lot of physical work, so it's been interesting to wonder, should I have done over the muscle instead of under the muscle? Would I have had less problems with healing or with radiation. I mean, we'll never know, but I was always curious about that. And I, I did mention to Dr. Summer, I think last year, you know, I've been noticing more people are trending towards that um, because when I'm working, it does this little bit like deformity every time I flex or move. So it does look a little odd. Um, so I, and, sh and she mentioned, I think you might re want to repeat it, that um, it probably wouldn't have worked for me as well. I would have a lot more rippling. I, and she did a lot of fat grafting for me. Um, so I probably would have had even more. Is that correct? Yeah, probably. I mean, obviously, the um, the other thing to think about is, I mean, there's, this is almost too complicated to really talk about. Um, it's, on, it's much easier to talk to on an individual basis with each patient. But, um, you know, some of it has to do with what other surgeries you've had before you have uh, breast cancer or breast reconstruction, or it has to do with the amount of tissue you have, or if you've had radiation. There's so many things that, that factor into that decision making that it's so important just to have a discussion with each person about it. So there, because there isn't a perfect way for everyone. And even though we now do a lot of this pre-pectoral uh, reconstruction, um, it, it still isn't necessarily the right answer for everyone. There are still reasons we go back and do the more traditional way because it, it just makes more sense for them. Excellent. Thank you both. You know, Dr. Summer, I actually have a question for you. When you are uh, onboarding a new patient, do you take into account their lifestyle and their work? Uh, you know, maybe someone that's at their desk all day versus someone like Susan that's running a winery or uh, picking grapes, uh, do, do those factors, to go, are they factored into your decision with the patient? Well, when we talk about the different options, um, even if you have somebody who works at a desk all day, they may go run marathons on the weekends. Ah. So, you know, I mean, they could be a very active person, just maybe not at their job. So you, you first find out, you know, about them, what do they like to do, and as you're going through the discussion of using implants versus using your own tissue, you dive deeper into that, because when you use someone's own tissue, a common, most common area is the abdominal tissue, that's going to potentially affect their abdominal muscles. Um, so that would be something you'd have a discussion with. If it's someone who is very active, that might be something they would not want to do. Right, exactly. So it's just finding out what that person, um, you know, what their interests are, what kind of, what, what they do for a living, what they do, you know, for fun. Um, it also depends on their, their, their body habitus. I mean, using your own tissue isn't necessarily an option for everybody. If you're sure. a real thin person, you may not be able to use your own tissue. You, you would really have to go with implants. So it's all very dependent. And also like elasticity of the skin. Yeah. These are all different factors. Or if you've had radiation or if your reconstruction is delayed, not immediate. I mean, all those things factor in. Thank you so much for that. Um, let's see, Tammy, um, do you do, uh, speak to other uh, survivors and patients about your experience? And do you find that, uh, you know, does that help you with, you know, with your journey? And, um, you know, how, how, how do you think you would uh, answer a question if someone said to you, gee, you know, I, I need to, I, had, I was diagnosed with breast cancer, I need to have surgery. You know, what should I do first? Or, you know, like, what was, what was really hard for you? How would you would answer those questions? Well, I've had actually quite a few in the last couple of years through networking that end up on the phone. And I don't want to be pushy. I just want them to do what's best for them. And if they don't feel they're getting the right questions answered by the doctor they're with, then go to another one. Um, I obviously always kind of push towards Dr. Summer if they're local. Um, and same with my surgical team. I thought everyone was amazing. I couldn't ask for a better team. But obviously it's not the same for everyone, so they should ask and reach out if they're not getting their answers you know, answered the way they want. Right, exactly. Thank you so much for that. Um, 
<laughs> and Janelle, what, what would you um, say to someone that was just starting off in their uh, journey as far as breast reconstruction goes? Like, what tips would you give them about what to ask their doctor or, you know, how it might feel? I mean, I don't think there's any, like, I think it's me. Um, <laughs> I don't think there's any, like, right questions to ask. I don't think there's any wrong questions to ask. I definitely just think to ask questions, definitely do your research. But, um, oh, there we go. Um, definitely do your research, but um, I don't know. I, I just feel like ask for options that you have. You don't have to go to or do the first option that someone suggests you, especially being so young. I feel like I was definitely just, I don't want to say pushed in a direction, but I don't think I had the enough knowledge to know kind of what the right decision or best decision for me was because in the end, that decision like just wasn't the best specifically for me and is why I had to have additional surgeries after the fact. So yeah, definitely ask questions, um, see what your options are, and if you don't feel comfortable with it, you don't have to go ahead and go through with that. Excellent, thank you so much. And Autumn, I see you shaking your head. Uh, what advice would you give to, I like to call them our little sisters, I never had, uh, I always wanted a big sister, so I feel like, you know, we've kind of walked the walk and been through it. So, you know, for someone that, let's say, came to you and said, I really think I want to do what you did, like, what advice would you give me? What should I be, um, you know, prepared for highs, lows? What would you tell them? I would tell them that if, if they're pre-reconstruction, really think about what's going to make you happy and don't don't make a snap decision you know when i initially chose to do the reconstruction i was 25 i was single i was like oh well you know if i ever want to get married again you know i kind of need to look like a woman and then and i'm sorry how old are you now 34 okay um as far as removing the implants, it was a battle. It was a mental battle. Um, with the implants, I felt broken. You know, I can remember going shopping with my mom, and even after the, the bandages came off initially, just sitting in the bathtub, because, you know, I couldn't take a shower. I had drains. Just bawling. Absolutely miserable. Um, I feel like if that's the reaction that you're going to have to having the reconstruction, in hindsight, it wasn't the right decision for me. Um, at the end of the day, you have to do what's best for you. Exactly. And some, some people doing the reconstruction is what's best for them. That's what's going to make them feel like themselves. Right. So it, it's something that you really just need to sit down and weigh all your pros and cons. Am I going to be happy with, in my case, feeling like I literally had boulders sitting on my chest? Or am I going to be happy looking down and not saying anything? These are all very real thoughts, and, and to your point, it's true, you need to be able to sit with it and think about it, it's a big decision, and to be at peace with it and really reach inside and really be in touch and be truthful to yourself about what's going to really make you happy, not what's going to make your significant other happy. That's another issue that I know we, I think we touched upon, and I was like, oh my God, your husband sounds amazing, because he, if you don't mind talking about that, because that's obviously... I mean, a major component is, you know, uh, we still want to be attractive, single, married, or, you know, whatever. So um, how did you navigate that conversation with him? He knew um, how unhappy I was. And when we met, I was already several years post-chemo. Um, I think I just had my third fat grafting surgery. Um, and he said, 
it doesn't matter. I'm going to love you no matter what you look like. Incredible. And that we all know that we're like, okay, yeah, no, okay. Right, you want to be like, no, really, <laughs> for real. Yeah. Don't tell um, me what I want to hear. Exactly. And the longer we were together and married, the more unhappy he could see that I was. And finally he was just like, call the surgeon, take the stupid things out. So I did. Right. Well, that you have a wonderful, supportive husband, and you're very lucky. And to anyone that's out there, if you're thinking about, no matter what, what kind of reconstruction you're looking at, is obviously you want to, uh, you know, bring the ones that are close to you uh, into that part of that decision as well. Um, we're going to be wrapping up shortly, but you know, before we end, I think, uh, Dr. Summer, if you can maybe just highlight for those that are that are tuning in and that maybe were just recently diagnosed, what are the main options that we have uh, in, in layman's terms, in terms of uh, reconstruction? So we have no reconstruction. In, in that case, you may choose to um, get a mastectomy bra and a prosthesis, which you wear in the bra. Um, or you have implant reconstruction, which there are various um, types of that, meaning some people will go straight to an implant, some people have to go through an expansion process first and then an implant. Uh, and then the other option is using your own tissue. And as I mentioned earlier, the abdomen is a very common area we, where we borrow tissue from to reconstruct a breast mound. The back is another area. Uh, the buttock, the thigh, those are less common. But those, that is another major area of reconstruction is using your own tissue. Um, and like I said, there are pros and cons to all of those. So it really just depends on having a very in-depth conversation with your surgeon about what's best for you. Thank you so much, Dr. Summer. And again, uh, thank you. The theme of uh, this uh, panel discussion is really all about, uh, obviously, breast reconstruction, but about knowing uh, what your options are and being your own advocate. Um, so before we take some questions from our audience and our friends out on Facebook, I first and foremost want to thank SIU uh, Plastic Surgery for hosting this incredible conversation. I'd like to thank Dr. Summer, who's my new, oh, I have so many new friends here tonight. Uh, amazing uh, doctor with such a huge heart and a huge fan club, um, which I just love. Um, Susan, the gorgeous Susan Dannenberger for being our lovely host here at uh, the Vineyard and Winery. Uh, Tammy, another new friend, you're amazing. I hope you maybe pull me over one day. <laughs> we can have a giggle. <laughs> and Janelle, you're so beautiful inside and out. Your family must be so proud and we can't wait to see this new baby boy of yours. And Autumn, their own words. Um, I just adore you, we all adore you and applaud you for your, for your bravery, but most of all for doing what's best for you. Um, so we're going to answer some questions from the audience. I have one here and now I don't, it was on the phone and here we go, live TV, let's see, okay. Um, we have lots of family and support in the audience. How can others support someone they know going through breast cancer or reconstruction? Who would like to take that? Thank you, Tammy. So how did this support help them? So, uh, so a lot of the your guys, support help you, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> so a lot of guys I worked with, they didn't know what to say or do, and I told them, it's okay not to say anything. It's okay just to listen to me if I ramble. <laughs> so I think just being there and being an ear, and if you can, you know, give a shoulder, that's usually what we need. Beautiful. So. Beautiful. Thank you for that. It's interesting because I actually just launched a podcast called Zero Cancer on Beautiful. And not to give myself a plug here at all, but it just you just uh, triggered something. I interviewed my mom. Um, and one of the questions I asked her was, Mom, like for all the people listening, how would you say is the best way to help someone? And I thought she would be like, chicken soup, you know, this, that. Typical Jewish mom. And she was like, just be there. Just be there for them. And there's, you know... It's there's three words, but they're so important. So thank you for sharing that. Do we have any other questions before we wrap up? Yes. Yes. So, 
So the question was, thank you so much. Is there a time frame from the time uh, you are diagnosed with breast cancer, the time that you have to make your breast reconstruction decision, you know, in terms of making sure that you have insurance, is there a window of time that you need to make that decision? No, there is no window. I mean, there is sometimes, a, uh, not, not based on insurance anyway, there is sometimes a window um, if you want immediate reconstruction, because if you have breast cancer and you need a mastectomy, you can't wait six months necessarily to have that mastectomy. You need to have it sooner than later. So you're going to have to make that decision on what type of reconstruction you're going to have if you want it done at the same time. But there is also the option of having a mastectomy and then having delayed breast reconstruction. So having it done six months, 12 months, two years down the road. So you don't necessarily have to have it done at the same time. There once again are pros and cons for doing it at the same time versus doing it delayed. So it's, that's why it's really important to at least get your options, but then maybe you'll decide, well, I'm just gonna deal with the cancer right now and then I'm gonna come back and do reconstruction later when I've dealt with this problem and I have more time to kind of think through all my options. So insurance doesn't dictate that. Excellent, thank you so much for that input. The other thing, the other thing I didn't know was when I wasn't happy with the first reconstruction, I didn't know that I had the option to go to a doctor and have more done and that legally the insurance company, once we started this process, had to pay for as many as reconstructions as it took for me to be happy. And I didn't know that was an option. I thought, oh my God, I can't do this because it's going to cost me so much money. And so it's taken four years for Dr. Summer to do my reconstruction slowly over time to make me feel like myself again. And I had no idea that that was something I could continue to keep doing. Thank you for sharing that, Susan. That's incredibly important. And I'm just going to reiterate what you had just said is that basically, I mean, you have to check with your individual insurance carrier, but it sounds like, and would you, agree, would you agree, Dr. Summer, that for the most part, you can have as many revisions as you need to, and it should mostly be covered by the insurance carrier? Well, I mean, like you said, you'd have to check with each insurance because some, you know, it's getting harder and harder sometimes with insurance companies as far as they're pushing their <laughs> limits of what they're going to cover. Um, but in my experience here in central Illinois, for the most part, my patients who want revision surgeries are able to have those covered. Wonderful. I, I didn't even know that. that I, we're always learning. Um, we have another really good question from the audience. For you. <laughs> How can you find a qualified plastic surgeon? Well, probably the best place to start is your surgical oncologist, the person you go to for the cancer, because they're going to know the plastic surgeons that in, in their area that they work with. Um, and then, um, I've, you know, I, obviously you can look online. Um, obviously, SIU Plastic Surgery has a website that kind of talks about what we each do uh, at SIU, and so it shows that I do a lot of the breast reconstruction there, so that's how someone might find me. Um, and then probably either even talking to the surgical oncologist and having them connect you with some of their patients who have actually gone through reconstruction, that might also lead you to different plastic surgeons to talk to. Excellent. Thank you for answering that question. Uh, before we end, do we have any other questions from the audience? You guys have all been great. Um, I love my panel. I wish we could just take this, like, get a little roadie bus and take it on the road. You guys are pretty awesome. <laughs> um, and I also want to make sure I give a huge special thanks to Maria Ansley um, from SIU Medicine. Um, I mean, she's incredible. She's really the, uh, the powerhouse behind everything that you see in here tonight. Uh, she brought all of us together. She made sure that Dana and I flew here from Philly and New Jersey. And uh, we just couldn't be more honored to be here today. So thank you, Maria, for making this happen. This is incredible. I'll never forget it. Uh, let's put a huge round of applause for these four incredible patients and survivors. Um, I, Melissa, you said it earlier, this is not just healing and educational and uh, meant to inspire and empower all of you, but this is a huge moment for each of you as well. Getting up here and sharing these intimate parts of your story is so hard and it requires so much bravery and I just love each and every one of you and I'm so incredibly impressed and honored to call you my friends. And let's give a round of applause to all of these amazing caregivers and supporters. We know what you do for us. 
So thank you for being a part of this. It's, it's really, really amazing to have you all here to support and see these incredible stories. And when you're educating and empowering other patients, you're also educating and empowering those that surround them. And that's all of you. So it's, it's not easy to stand by our side and get us through these really, really tough and hard times. So we love you all so, so much for doing that. And I want to make sure we thank you. Oh, stop it. I'm up here to thank you. So sit back down. <laughs> Just one, one word. Uh, one thing I didn't mention is that uh, Dana Donafrey is the founder of Anna Ono Intimates, and she produces a fashion show on New York Fashion Week every year. And obviously, we couldn't do it this past year due to COVID. But that's one of the reasons that so many of us have connected. That's how I met Susan. Uh, so really, thank you, Dana, for um, bringing us together in the first place. That's all I got to say. Oh, well, you're amazing. And um, thank you, Dr. Summer, for getting up here and, and helping navigate all of these very important questions and information. And of course, our incredible modelist, or uh, modelist, <laughs> whatever that is, moderator meets panelist, uh, Melissa. And thank you also. Please don't forget the wine here at Dannenberg Family Vineyards. Mwah amazing. The food, you guys can chill. The music's going to get turned back on. We hope that you can hang out, celebrate. We're all going to be available for questions if there's anybody in the audience that would like to ask things in more of a private setting. So please enjoy yourself. And again, thank you for coming out and joining us tonight.